Keeping to our tradition, here is the monthly update for November on the public portfolio. So in this video, we will take a look at how the public portfolio did in the month of October and then I'll show you what are we doing for the month of November and what is the new stock that we added and in the end I'll provide my theory on why we added that particular new stock. So some of these stocks in the portfolio have reported their earnings. I'll put a link over here for both the recaps video. Definitely take a look at it. I highly recommend that you listen to these earnings calls because they provide you some key insights on how the company has performed and how the company foresee its performance. All the analysts will base their price targets on a stock based on the future guidance and the current performance of the company. So I highly recommend that you should always listen to these earnings calls. For some of these stocks, the earnings have been reported. For some of them, it has not been. I will be live streaming or doing a recap for all the companies that are in the public portfolio. So keep an eye out for that. And by the way, if you have not subscribed to the channel by now, don't forget to hit that like, click on subscribe and ring that bell notification. So without further ado, Let's dive in. For the month of October, our portfolio was set up something like this. We had about 33% of AMD with about $486 as invested in that company. We had SoFi at 20.6 with the value of $299.85. We had ChargePoint at 12.9% for $187. Pinterest $276 with about 19% asset allocation and Wally -E and Ford being at 8 and 6% respectively. So this is how our portfolio looked at the start of the month in October. Next, I want to show you the performance of each of these assets in the month of October. But before we do that, let's take a quick look in September and how, and you will see the difference on how much the portfolio has changed in the last two months. So in September, we had read all across, except AMD, every other stock was in minus and we had some unrealized loss of about 20%, 13, 29, 3 and so on. Now, if we move to October's performance here, we added Ford Motors, we have about 19% gain. As of 10.28, we were sitting at about $13.88. We have AMD at 33 3.86% profit with about $122 gain. We have SoFi technology and SoFi really had an amazing run and we have added $50 to the portfolio with about 20% upside. So that has changed our asset allocation in the portfolio. Pinterest was also in gain when the news of PayPal acquisition was announced. However, when PayPal mentioned that they are not going to be pursuing the acquisition, Pinterest fell down and then that's why we are back again at 17% loss. Vale has been having a very rough performance if you have not seen their earnings call, I'll put it over here. Definitely check that out. ChargePoint is going to be coming up with the earnings very soon and I will be live streaming that earnings as well. For the month of November, we added three more wallets at $13.20 as the stock went down. We added Pinterest one stock at $46 when it hits its 52-week low. And for the month of November, we added Robinhood to our portfolio. We bought two stocks of Robinhood at $34.66 and that came out to be about $69.32. Before I explain you my theory of adding Robinhood, this is the new breakdown for the month of November. We have AMD at 29.9%, SoFi at 19.9%, ChargePoint at 14.3%, Pinterest at 18%, Wally at 8%, Ford at 5 and Robinhood at 4.3%. So this is how our portfolio looks like in the month of November. As an exception for the month of November, I am also allocating $150 in addition to the $200 I have already invested and continue to monitor any opportunity that presents itself in Robinhood, Ford, Wally and Pinterest or ChargePoint and I will add as I see fit. Now my reasoning for adding Robinhood to the portfolio is very simple. I see Robinhood as the market leader in terms of getting new users interested in investing. Robinhood also has a crypto platform where you can trade crypto. Now I do understand that there are other competitors like Webull, Public, Moomoo and so on and so forth. But Robinhood still commands the first movers advantage in this industry. Now I do understand that there are a lot of controversies around Robinhood when in 2020 they had two or three days of outage where a lot of people could not sell when the Tesla price ran up. And earlier this year, they took the buy sell button away during the GME short squeeze. And then there is also a lot of controversies behind the payment of order flow. So there is definitely a lot of controversies with Robinhood at this current point in time. However, I'm looking at Robinhood not from what controversies are around this company, but I'm looking at from a long term perspective. When you have new investors who come on board when they start investing, 
which platform do they mostly go to and we see that Robinhood maintain that lead even though there are new competitors coming on board. So as of now, my bull case and my theory is that for at least in the near term, I still see Robinhood as one of the most favorite platforms out there for new investors. Now keeping that in mind, that's why I have added Robinhood as part of my public portfolio. Again, we are not tied up with any particular company. If the bull case changes, I will not hesitate to sell out from that position. As a disclaimer, this is not a financial advice for you to buy, sell or hold any of the securities mentioned in this video. So please do your own due diligence before you invest in any stock. Well, that's it for this month's recap. If you would like to follow me on this journey and, and see how this portfolio evolves in the coming months, don't forget to hit that like button, click on subscribe and ring that bell notification. I will see you next time my investor family, but don't forget to invest for tomorrow.